Hello, welcome to the Apex Networks training for the RMS system. This is part of our online training program developed by Apex Networks to assist you in getting the very most from your software. This short video covers the recovery screen. We recommend you play this video on a separate device from that you are setting your system up on. This will allow you to pause, rewind and keep pace of your progress without having to switch screens. Your recovery screen is the dashboard for your business. From here you should be able to access all of the information that your controllers and other staff need. At the top left hand corner of the screen click on the menu button. Here you will see all of the RMS applications. You will also see Shared Tools, where you will find the application's wall statistics and employee clocking kiosk. Using either of these applications will not use any of your system licenses. For information on how to use the wall statistics function, please refer to the reporting tutorial and for the employee clocking function, refer to the timekeeping and driver activities tutorial. Click on Information and Links and you will have access to the application's Your Company's Online Booking Portal commonly known as Web Portal, your own personal employee portal and the Apex Customer Self-Service Portal. Further down the screen you'll see confirmation of which software version of RMS you're running and your installation code, which is your company's unique system code. Below you will see your current invoicing date. This is the date that will show on all invoices created during this current login session. You can change the date by clicking on this blue icon and adjusting the date as you need. Click the tick to confirm. This allows you to catch up with month end invoicing, etc. Below, it confirms who is currently logged into this software profile, and this shows you your clocking status, whether you are currently clocked on shift or not. By clicking on this, you can enter your four digit PIN and clock on or off. Also, here you can change your password or log out of your system. Go to the orange bar at the top of the screen. Here you will see the four icons for the applications recovery, parking, workshop and hire. Clicking on these allows you to navigate quickly and easily from one page to another without the need to go via the main menu button, although the option is there if required. Click on the job search icon. This function allows a simple search for a job using either the customer order number, registration or fleet number, your RMS job number or your RMS invoice number. You will also see there's a tick box to enable your search to include the hire module. The next tab in the job search window is advanced search and this will give you additional search fields to refine your search further. The final tab in the job search window is workshop labour search. This is used for searching workshop labour lines. Here you can enter a date range, your account name and there is a search field for labour text items, for example replace clutch, inspection, service etc. Next go back to the orange bar at the top of the screen and click on the diary icon. This is an extremely useful system function, allowing diary notes to be added by any system user and is visible to all other users. There are three diary pages, Recovery, Parking and Workshop. You can divide further by site if your company uses multiple site locations. We recommend for best practice that anything that is important or may have an effect on your business is noted here, from local events to major incidents. This allows the manager or admins to have a better overview of that day's business should a complaint or inquiry be made and need to be investigated. Click on the next icon, Reports. This allows detailed reporting on all aspects of your business, including live and performance statistics, scheduled and storage reports. The next icon is Mapping. A full tutorial for this section can be found in the tutorial Mapping, Pinpoint and Geolocations. Click on the next icon, Employee. This gives you access to work rotor and driver status. You can manually add driver activity here and you can add a staff holiday request as well as log an employee performance note or absence. There is also a section to view driver or technician ledgers. Next you will see phone book. This is where all the contact details for system users to use are stored in one place. They can be broken down into categories such as supplier, staff, contractors etc and there's also a search function. To add details, simply click on the button at the bottom marked Add to open a new template. The next icon is Invoicing. Invoicing is covered in the Invoicing and Accounting tutorial. Click on the next icon, Part Sales. This allows you to make an ad hoc part sale, review your part sales list or do a part sales report. 
The stock icon is next and allows you to manage your stock by adding stock, moving stock and reporting on stock levels. The next icon is set up for the rescue and recovery module. This gives you the access you require for setting up the functions for the recovery and rescue module. After this you will see the four alert icons. The first is to alert the operator to an ANS message and will turn from grey to gold when there is an ANS message alert along with an audible warning. The next is to alert the user of a driver message and will turn from grey to green. The flag icon next will turn red with an audible alert when you receive a reminder. Reminders can be set on a job for job specific reminders or by clicking here for general reminders. The fourth icon is the web portal chat function. Along from these is an icon marked NC which is your night control function. This will allow you to switch your night control divert on or off and therefore shows you the status of whether it is on or off. When clicking on these speech bubbles you will see if anyone else in your company logged on as a system user. By clicking on their name you can begin a text conversation. A text box will appear in the bottom right hand corner of both of your screens. Below is the search and filter section. This allows you to filter your screen so that you're only looking at the relevant work that you need by selecting from these fields. It also allows you to save your filter preferences by clicking on this icon and naming your saved preference. Your names, saved preferences, will be stored here in this list. You can save as many preferences as you wish and they'll be available on any device that you're logged into. These blue arrows, when clicked on, will reset your screen to your current selected preferences if you have changed any. The five icons shown here will allow you to hide certain types of work. This can be very useful if you're working in a particularly busy control environment where you have very busy screens. If you can see a tick by the icon, this means that this work is visible. If there is a cross, this work is hidden or won't be visible on screen. This is for recovery jobs. This is for redelivery jobs. These are jobs that need invoicing with their parking jobs. These are jobs on hold. These are for subcontracted work. Simply click to turn on and off. The tow truck icon shown here will create a new job template. The round button below will refresh your screen. This happens automatically every 20 seconds, but you can also do it here manually. Click on this icon to turn your job screen into a map showing where each of your jobs are and their destination if they're a recovery job. The status of each job is shown by the colour of the border. The job status and progress is depicted by the different colours shown here, along with a number indicating how many jobs are at that particular stage. In addition to this, you will see green jobs, which are jobs on hold, and these will always stack at the top of the screen. You will also see red jobs, which are jobs that have run past their ETA.